Most homeowners dream about having a beautiful lawn. A well-maintained lawn can make a home stand out from the neighboring houses. It can increase the value of a home up to 15%. One of the biggest issues that a homeowner faces in the pursuit of a showpiece lawn is weeds. I am Chemical Operations Manager Casey Henderson, and today we are going to discuss broadleaf weeds. As a turf specialist, there are a number of broadleaf weeds that we will encounter in our day-to-day. -day. Some of those will be easy to control annuals. Some will be hard to control perennials. There are going to be winter weeds, spring weeds, and summer weeds. No matter what type of broadleaf weed we are facing, the objective is always the same. To rid the lawn of them and do what it takes to keep them out. First, let's break down the types of weeds we see here in our Midwestern cool season lawns. We're going to start with hard to control weeds. These are typically going to be perennial weeds. They grow from a taproot and oftentimes spread rhizomatously. They can also spread through tubers and seeds. Oftentimes these plants have developed uh, safety measures that protect them from our control efforts, but with the use of specialized selective herbicides, we can gradually establish control. Two examples that we're going to look at today are wild violets and ground ivy. Both are common here in central Indiana and both can pose an issue when it comes to control. Wild violets have evolved to produce a waxy coating on their leaves. This is a way for the plant to conserve moisture and protect itself from disease. It also has the added benefit of slowing the uptake of foliar herbicides. Ground ivy has developed a much different approach to self-preservation. It spreads through an extensive network of rhizomes, each with the capability of rooting at the node. This means that a part of the plant can take damage without affecting the entire plant. What that means for us is that if your foliar weed control application is not thorough, you may see ground ivy bounce back and thrive. The way we deal with these hard to control weeds is through our choice of herbicide and our timing of treatment. By using an ester based selective herbicide such as Cool Power and treating in the spring and fall when temperatures are cooler, we tend to see much better results. This is because in the spring, the plant has not fully developed that waxy coating on its leaves. And in the fall, we see that the plant is translocating nutrients to the root. And our, fall, our foliar herbicides will travel along with those nutrients and kill the plant from the root up. Uh, you will see in this next slide a 14-day comparison after treating a heavy infestation of what appears to be black medic, a low trailing annual that is often confused with white clover. Next, we're going to talk about a few easy to control broadleaf weeds. We're going to break them down into two categories, annuals and perennials. The annuals. Uh, first is bull, bull thistle. It's actually a biennial. It forms large infestations along trails and roadways and in vacant fields. The plant grows erect with spiny leaves and stems. Purple and maroon flowers top the spiny branches. This is burn weed a low-growing, freely branched winter annual that grows rapidly, producing spine-tipped burrs in the leaf axis. This is purslane, often confused with spurge, a summer annual that prefers compacted soils. Yellow flowers bloom from May through September on hot, sunny days. Spurge has red or purple stems with opposite oblong leaves. It grows in a prostrate clump in warm soils along sidewalks or flower beds and in thin areas of the turf. We also find it oftentimes in mulch beds. Knotweed, a summer prostrate uh, annual that is commonly found in pathways and other high traffic areas. Small white or pink flowers grow between the stem and the alternating oblong leaves. This is horseweed, a winter or summer annual that can reach up to six feet tall. It features alternating leaves with uh, slightly toothed margins. You'll see small white, uh, pink, or yellow flowers that top the central stem. Uh, in some areas of the country, horseweed has developed uh, a resistance to glyphosate. This is groundsel, uh, single stemmed with uh, branch upright growth, uh, yellow flowers that bloom year long, and it prefers rich, cool, moist soils. Uh, it can be a summer or an annual weed. Let's talk about some of the perennials that we're going to run into. This is beggarweed. 
It is a creeping perennial that features uh, pink flowers. It develops a large branching taproot that can sprout new stems. This plant is black medic. This prostrate plant can be an annual or a perennial. It prefers stressed and compacted lawns. It's often confused with white clover because of the similar leaf structure, but produces small yellow flowers. Next, we'll see Canadian thistle. It's a creeping perennial with spiny leaves and an extensive rhizome system. Uh, this, the rhizome system can be up to three feet long. Uh, purple flowers bloom in June through September. Curly dock is a taproot perennial with wavy leaves. The flowers begin as green clusters that are going to become reddish brown as they mature. Uh, this, this weed prefers wet areas. Here we have dandelions. They have bright yellow flowers. They're going to become puff balls as they mature. Long hollow stems and jagged hairless leaves are a dead indicator of uh, dandelions. These flowers grow all summer long. Here we have red clover, a cool season perennial that grows from a fibrous root system. Round pink to purple flowers grow on the, the multi-stem stalks. You know, now that we've we've looked at those weeds, I want to show you this. Um, this should be in every turf specialist's truck. This is the Corteva uh, Turf and Ornamental Weed Guide. Inside, you're going to find an index, some recommendations on uh, how to use some of the Corteva chemicals that are out there on the market. And then if you flip a little further, this is the important part. You're going to see these weed identification pages. If you're on a customer's lawn and you don't know what a weed is, having this book in your arsenal can really help you out. It makes you look professional and it also gives you some tips on how to control these weeds. Use this daily um, until you know this stuff by heart. This book is your weed bible. Now that we have an idea of what we're up against, let's take a look at the products that we would typically be using um, and the methods in which we might use them. First, we'll talk about Cool Power. Cool Power is an ester-based foliar three-way herbicide. Because it is ester-based, it has a much lower volatility than other products. This means that it will vaporize at temperatures above 80 degrees and can move off target. That's gonna affect neighboring flower beds or vegetable gardens. It absorbs through the leaf tissue and disrupts the plant's ability to process food. It will, in most cases, show quick indications of its work, which we will take a look at in just a moment. Threesome is a 2,4-D-based foliar three-way herbicide. It works in much the same way that Cool Power does by disrupting the feeding system, but it works better in warmer temperatures because it has a much higher volatility. Uh, the indicators that we see from successful application are going to be uh, the same as well. Although factors such as cool temperatures and drought conditions are going to slow down the control time uh, significantly uh, from a range of about three to seven days all the way out to 21 days before we actually see results. Now let's take a look at and discuss those indicators that tell us that our treatment is working like it should. One of the first signs that we will see is a curling of the stems and a rippling wilt in the leaves. This may not be plainly obvious to the homeowner, but as a trained specialist, you will come to recognize it pretty easily. Uh, this is typically within a few days of treatment, but can be as early as a day later in certain weeds and conditions, especially on warm days. Uh, the second stage indicator is going to be a significant decline in vitality. Leaves are going to really wilt, flowers are going to close up, and stems are going to droop or curl. And lastly, we'll see that the plant has lost its battle and not much is left but uh, a skeleton. This will usually decompose or be chopped down and mulched up by the mower. Another indicator that will often tell us that we have been successful in our application is a discoloration of the leaves. Uh, from, they'll go from green to a red or purple color. This tells us that the plant has lost its ability to produce chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is, as we know, the key ingredient in a plant's nutrition. 
The success of a foliar application has a lot to do with how it's applied. It must cover the plant's leaf tissue with enough herbicide mix to be absorbed. There are multiple ways this can be achieved, uh, each with their own benefits and drawbacks. For spot application where weed density is light, we can use a hand can or a backpack sprayer. This gives us mobility and flexibility to move around um, on the lawn and only treat what's needed. Using the nozzle to apply a fan-shaped spray that coats the leaf tissue with a fine mist, you're typically limited in the combination of products that you can apply with a backpack, meaning that fertilization would require a whole other process to apply. <coughs> For an all-over application on smaller properties, uh, properties with steep hills or small gates, a hose rig is typically used. It allows you to take a large quantity of product, uh, mixed product, out onto a lawn and apply both fertilizer and weed control with broad coverage. You are, of course, limited to the length of your hose. Another drawback is that the hose can become heavy. It can also get caught up or tangled on obstacles around shrubs, trees, flower beds, etc. For larger properties, a turf machine like this steel green unit that we're looking at is ideal. It gives you the versatility to apply both fertilizer and weed control at the same time. Uh, because it has both a boom sprayer and a hand wand, this unit also gives you the option of spot or full coverage application. It also holds a larger quantity of liquid product than a hand can or a backpack sprayer without the limitations of being tethered to your truck like a hose rig. No matter which choice of application method you choose, the key is consistency. Applying the proper amount of the right product at the right time and in the right place. Doing so will allow you the ability to transform a lawn from a weedy mess into a place of beauty and give your customer that feeling of pride in their lawn and home. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, I am Chemical Operations Manager Casey Henderson with Green's Lawn Care and Property Services. Always glad to help you out. If you have any questions or concerns, uh, need an estimate on your lawn, feel free to give us a call or check us out at www.greenslcps.com.